one day. That means he's the last one. I love you too. Giambo, everybody. My name's Ty. I'll be your safari driver. I'm a Ferrari. I'm a life preserve. I love your heads up there. You can see the animals. Funny guy. That's just some of the animals you may or may not see while we're out there. I see them all, but we do usually you have some pretty good luck. So go ahead and have those cameras up ready to go at all times. <laughs> because I can't stop for every single animal, and every animal definitely won't be stopping for us. Also, hold on extra tight to all your loose items, because if anything falls out of the truck, I'm not allowed to get out and get it. And just for your safety, keep your hands, arms, feet, legs, paws, claws, anything else you have inside the truck. And remember to stay fully seated as well. Don't stand up to look at the animals, because there's going to be quite a few holes and bumps in the road. You don't want to get anybody to get hurt. Fall off. Now, with all that being said, we'll begin our journey here in the Little Victory Forest. Our most animals use our natural camouflage to blend into their surroundings. So keep a close eye on the animals in the forest can hide really well sometimes. That's because they're usually pretty shy animals, and there's a lot of places for them to try to hide. So keep an eye out anywhere they can try to possibly be, like behind trees, rocks, bushes, and let me know what you can find. Sometimes their colors make them blend in really well. I'm not seeing anything. Over to the far left side of a head here, like down, is a black rhino. Oh, now, there are less than 5,000 of those black rhinos left in the world. That is because they are poached for their keratin horns. Black rhinos can also weigh around 3,000 pounds, and they have a pointed upper lip, so they can easily grab the leaves off the small branches and bushes in the area. All right, that was cool. Up ahead here, there's some tan animals on the hillside. Those are greater kudu. They're one of the larger antelope here in Africa. We can also tell that those up there are females because they don't have any horns on the top of their head. Only male greater kudus have horns. They can get about six feet in length. The reddish brown animals up there, those are bongos, nicknamed the ghosts of the forest because of how rarely they are ever seen. And both male and female bongos have those horns. It's actually how you can tell them apart is by the shape of those horns. And the bongos and greater kudu are related because they share the same number of white stripes on their back. Now it looks like we're going to be heading down to the Safi River now. Hopefully in the Safi River we'll find some hippos. But you got to keep a close eye out because once hippos are underwater, they're actually really hard to see most of the time. Blending in, looking like big rocks oh, okay. underwater. Looks like there's one to the right there, but let's see if there's any more just up ahead. Just make sure we're staying fully hippos. seated back there. Jesus. That includes everyone, even the little ones. Please stay fully seated back there. There's usually some more up here on the left side. Hopefully a little easier to see. There's a few more there to the left. Now a group of hippos. That's called a bloat. A bloat of hippos. And they use a wee song sound to communicate to each other. And each one is different, just like our voices. Hippos don't actually swim, they take a deep breath, sink down to the bottom, and then walk along down there. Whenever they're ready for another breath of air, they'll just come back up to the top, take another deep breath, and then sink back down. On the island there to the left, those are pink-backed pelicans. They get that name because the feathers on their back turn a light pink color during mating season. They can also have up to an eight-foot wingspan when they're fully grown. Look at these and a group of pelicans. That's called a pod. A yeah, pod of pelicans. I have a pie ball snake. They have pie pelicans. I have like pie snakes. There's a over here to the left on the island. Looks like there's a little baby there with it too, but make sure we're staying fully seated. Fully seated. Fully seated. Fully seated. Fully seated. Baby hippos can be born anywhere from 50 to 100 pounds at birth. That's also the first baby born on this reserve in 13 years. Wow. On the left down there, it looks like some Nile crocodiles. They can get about 20 feet long, weigh around 500 pounds. They can also easily eat over 200 pounds in just one meal, so they usually eat about once a week. They can also hold their breath completely underwater for almost two hours at a time. And a group of crocodiles on land. That's called a bass. A group of crocodiles down in the water. That's called a float. You see the crocs lay there on the shore with their mouths wide open. 
It's not because they want to eat you, it's just because they're trying to cool off, and that's how they do it. They'll lay on the shore and open their mouths as wide as they can. Pretty cool tree. The animals will work together out here to shape how the land looks. Elephants will knock down trees in their way. Giraffes, they'll eat the undersides of trees. And then antelope will come along, eating up the grass, keeping everything nice and tidy. Over to the left, down. going down by the bushes there, are some African wild dogs, also known as the painted dogs because of the beautiful markings on their fur. And they are one of the most successful hunters on the savanna, chasing their prey down to the point of exhaustion. That's because they all work really well as a team together and they all care for one another. Also over okay. here to the left, the tan animals are Patterson Helots, the largest antelope here in Africa. They can get about 2,000 pounds. Also jump straight up in the air, eight feet high. Wow. Further back there to the left, the brown animals laying down, oh, those are sable yeah. antelope. They are the official emblem of this reserve, and the darker their fur color, the more dominant that they are. Looks like there's a baby Patterson Eland on the left here, by that adult. And on the right and left sides of the truck here are some termite mounds. The animals like to use them as scratching posts because they can be almost as hard as concrete. And eventually over time will wear down like the one over to the far right. And that's when the smaller animals will actually use them as a perch. So we can look out over the savanna. Over to the left on the hillside up there, it looks like some spring bog. They can leap forward in the air about six feet repeatedly when frightened. Thirteen feet when running. And that's pretty much as big as they get. They only get about three feet tall. And over to the right side there, all those gray animals, those are build a build the Their young can run within 15 minutes after burning. Otherwise, they would get left behind. They're also known as noobs because of the grunting sound that they make. And they like to migrate in really large groups, which is why you usually don't see them alone. Well, the bees can also go about five days without drinking a single drop of water. There's another springbok out there to the right on that hillside. actually like to sleep standing up at night, which isn't a problem for them because they only sleep for about 30 minutes every night. Wow. They pretty much spend the rest of their time eating. In yeah, fact, giraffes eat so much that they have a dark purple tongue so it doesn't get sunburned while they do it. You can also see the ossicones are right on top of the giraffe's head. Those are skin-covered horns. And the giraffe's heart is about two feet long. It weighs around 25 pounds. They have the highest blood pressure of any animal, and that's for obvious reasons. Right here. Looks like there's one over to the right side here in the water. And we can tell that's probably a male elephant because it looks to be all alone. Females usually stay with other females and the babies, while males usually break away from the herd. 
There's definitely a male. We can also tell that's an African elephant by the shape of his ears. That is the shape of Africa. And their greatest threat is humans due to poaching for their ivory tusks. Wow. And loss of habitat. Let's see if we can find any more just up ahead. Looks like we might have to head down to the red clay pits. Elephants like to hang out around there because they like to eat the red clay for the minerals. It also helps them digest their food. So we'll check down there. Just around the corner here and over the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> over in Kenya built beehive fences to put up around their crops to help keep out the elephants. Oh, one back here. It also gave those farmers a new source of income from the honey. We might get a better view just around the corner here. <laughs> Let's go out and take you all on the trail. Looks like there's also a little baby trail. over to the left here. That little baby is about a year old. And probably weighs well over a thousand pounds. Female elephants are pregnant for almost two years, 22 months to be exact, and when the babies are born they're almost 300 pounds. The elephant's trunk is also a combination of their nose and upper lip, and it can hold about five gallons of water inside of it. They'll use that to spray on themselves to cool down on a hot day. They can also throw dirt or mud on their backs, or even fan themselves with their big ears. Because there's a bunch of blood veins on the back side of their ears, so they fan themselves and create some air pockets behind there to cool them off. Flamingos, they can get about five feet tall, they weigh around nine pounds. They are the largest flamingos, they also have the least amount of pink on them. Lesser flamingos have more of that pink coloring on their body. Greater flamingos get their pink coloring from their diet, mostly the brine shrimp that they eat. The group of flamingos, that's called a flamboyance. A flamboyance of flamingos. Flamboyant. We can tell they're black with white stripes because they have a black nose. They also have a very powerful kick, strong enough to break a lion's jaw. Mm. And each zebra's striped coat is unique to that zebra. No two are the same, just like her fingerprints. They're all different. can't see that well either, which is why they rely on their really great sense of hearing and smell to help them get around. Over to the left side, laying at the top of the hill there by the bushes, there are two cheetahs up there. The cheetahs can run about 60 miles an hour in just three seconds. They also use their long tail to help them steer while they're running. And 
they are the largest cats that can purr. They do have some unretractable claws, though, so it's not the type of cat you want to make purr. And we also think that Cheetah is a very successful hunter because of how fast they can run, but they're not. They can only do it for short periods of time, and then they have to rest. Oh, it's an animal. We need a hunt. Over the left looks like a female lion just lying about up there at the oh, crack of the Koopi Rocks. Oh, look at the, lion. the lions are actually pretty inactive throughout the day. About 16 to 20 hours of their day wow. has just been sleeping up there on those rocks. That's because they do all their hunting and stuff at nighttime. Because they have six times greater vision than us at night. Female lions usually do the hunting for the pride. Both yeah, the right to right stay back right. and protect the pride. The lion's roar can also be heard from almost five miles away. That's what heights. I want to hear. The lion's roar. That's a couple more rhinos. After sunset, one of our nighttime stories may be lucky enough to see the lion's actually doing something. Over to the left hand looks like a baby warthog, a few of them. They are the largest burrowing animals, and they back in those burrows with their tusks facing out, so they can easily chase away any predators that may come by. They can also steal burrows from other animals if they want to as well. <laughs> Look at him. Also, if I head here to the left leg down on the ground, looks like an ostrich. <laughs> you can tell it's a female because it has gray feathers. Male ostriches have black feathers. If you ever look close enough at the size of their eyeball, it's actually bigger than their brain. Also, to the right over there looks like more white rhinos. And another grand zebra here on the right as well. Looks like some ostrich eggs down there on the right. Those can weigh around three pounds each. You need to go stand on them and they won't even break. Just an ostrich egg is equivalent to about two dozen chicken eggs. There's two more ostriches over on the right side here as well. Is this awesome or what? Now be sure to come on another safari before we leave here at night.